improvement bill here. Many of you have asked me about the actual behind the scenes process that I have for making these sorts of videos. So today I've decided to pull back the curtain and show you exactly what I do. Now, the very first step for my video creating process is to come up with the idea. And there are basically four places that I turn to for this. The first is from reading. When I'm reading nonfiction books, I will often come across what I like to call an aha moment. Basically, when something clicks in my head and I understand a concept from a new point of view. If the aha moment is powerful enough, if it's something that I feel like people really ought to know, then I will take it, flesh it out, and make it into a video. The second source of my ideas is during my conversations with others. Occasionally, when I'm doing coaching calls, speaking with others in my Discord server, or even when I'm talking to friends, I'll find myself explaining a concept or answering a question in a new way that I've never done before. And if this explanation is really good, I'll make a note of it in my bullet journal, which often ends up becoming a video. The third source of my ideas is when I ask you guys, the viewers of this channel, for your feedback. Every once in a while, I'll make a post on my community tab asking you guys about the biggest problems you are facing or what questions you have for me, and I'll take the top comments there and make them into videos. And finally, the most random but also one of the most common sources of ideas is when I'm showering. See, the thing is, when you shower, your brain waves literally change, and this brings you into a state that is ideal for introspection and creativity. So oftentimes, when I'm short on ideas, I will just take an extremely long shower and wait and wait until an idea pops into my head, and when that happens, I'll run to my bullet journal, still dripping wet, and I'll jot it down. Now, after coming up with an idea, the next step for me is to create the outline for the script. I like creating an outline first because for educational videos like this, you need to make sure that the flow of your thoughts makes sense. There needs to be a sequential order to things. So I start by thinking about all the sections that I need for the video, sort of like figuring out the table of contents before you write a book. Now, it's very important to note that I don't write much when I do the outline. I usually just jot down one or two sentences for each of the sections just enough so that when I come back to start fleshing out my thoughts for each of the sections, I'll know what I was thinking about. I also use lines to separate each of these sections to help keep my thoughts organized. The moment I finish the outline, I will set the entire project aside and pat myself on the back for a job well done, and I will not touch it again until I've slept on it for at least one night. See, I believe that sleeping between sessions helps improve the quality of your writing. Personally, I found that my best work is done in the mornings when I've had a good full night of sleep, so I try my best to write when I'm in that state of mind. After I slept on the outline for at least a day, I will start working on the first draft of the script. I try to imagine that I'm explaining the topic to someone in real life. I'll look at what I've written down for each section and try to flesh it out as much as possible, opening my mind and simply letting all the words in my head pour out nonstop without judgment. I do this until I reach the end of the Word document. Now, it's important to note that I limit my writing to just two to three hours a day. See, I've noticed that the quality of what comes out of my head decreases drastically after about three hours, so I try to do most of my writing in the mornings and I'll save the more brain-dead tasks, like responding to emails for the afternoon, because they don't require nearly as much mental clarity. Now, I do not revise my writing at all during this step. Once I'm done with the first draft, I'll either switch to another project or wait until the next day before I even attempt to edit it. I do this because I want to be able to clear my mind before reading the script out loud. This allows me to spot the parts that wouldn't make sense to the listener, which I'll end up cutting. I found that if I attempt to do both at the same time, if I try to write and edit in the same session, my efficiency drops drastically because I'm switching back and forth between two totally different ways of thinking. One is focused on creating and letting all my thoughts flow out, while the other is all about listening carefully and figuring out which thoughts to cut. Once I've revised the script, I'll set it aside and work on another project, again, because I want to sleep on the entire thing before finalizing it. When I wake up the next day, I'll start finalizing the draft. I'll read the script out loud again, but this time I'll focus on the more technical errors that I have, which actually brings us to the sponsors of today's video, Grammarly. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant with more than 20 million users. Their free version helps you with your spelling and grammar when you write, but there's much, much more. 
See, Grammarly's premium service provides in-depth writing feedback, which you can customize to your needs. It allows you to toggle how concise you want to be, the level of vocabulary that you want to use, and even the tone of your writing, so that you can customize the experience that you want your audience to have. I personally use Grammarly to make sure that my writing is as concise and straightforward as possible, which is why my favorite feature is the clarity suggestions. I run an educational channel, so I want to make sure that my lessons are understood by people from all walks of life. The clarity suggestion saves me a bunch of time when I'm revising my drafts for my videos. Grammarly also comes with a browser extension that helps you write emails, copy for websites, or even captions for social media. You can use the Grammarly editor on their website, which will allow you to edit your writing while getting in-depth feedback and suggestions custom suited to your needs. You can sign up for a free account at www.grammarly.com forward slash pill, which will also give you 20% off Grammarly Premium if you like access to all of those extra features. Now back to the topic at hand. Once I've gone over the script multiple times and I'm happy with how it sounds, I will record it. Now, I'm actually pretty picky when it comes to recording audio. I will redo lines obsessively until the tone and execution sound just right, which means that for a video like this one, which is probably going to be around like eight to 10 minutes long, I'll end up with like 40 minutes of raw audio that needs to be cleaned up. Editing the audio is something that I used to do myself. It used to take anywhere from two to four hours and I really did not like it. But nowadays I outsource this task to an audio engineer who is far more experienced and who actually enjoys working with audio. This idea of outsourcing is something that you should really keep in mind when it comes to running a business. You should not be trying to do everything by yourself Because quite honestly, there's someone out there who can do a better job than you, who also enjoys it more, and doing so will save you so much time. While the audio is being edited by the engineer, I'll send the finalized script to one of the artists that I have on my team. I've managed to recruit artists from all over the world. This is why almost all of my videos have a different style, because different people are working on each one. And just a fun fact, the reason why I include a sponsor in almost every single video is because I pay my artists more than triple what some of my competition on YouTube is paying. One of my artists from California even told me that my rate is 50% higher than what major studios like Cartoon Network pay. It can cost me anywhere from $500 to $1,500 per video just for the animation, which is why if you want to help support the channel, the best thing to do is to check out our sponsors. Many of them have free trials, and if you sign up for those free trials, they will want to work with us again. This way, our artists continue to eat well, and you guys will continue to get high-quality content for free. Anyways, once the artist receives the script, they'll draft a storyboard, which is like a sketch of how each scene will play out. Then we jump on the phone and go over it together. Once all the changes have been made, I'll send them the finalized audio, and they will start finalizing all of the scenes. This is a process that takes up to three weeks to complete. I forgot to mention that while the video is being finalized, I'm thinking about the thumbnail for the video. See, the thumbnail actually plays a vital role in the success of a video, so I'll often get multiple versions done. You might have noticed this before, I often change the thumbnail and title for some of our videos. If a video isn't performing that well, I'll try my best to save it because I've invested so much time and money making the video, so I don't want it to go to waste. Once the video and thumbnail are ready, I upload the video onto YouTube, I hang out for a couple of hours responding to comments, and the rest is history. It's also important to note that I track all of these steps using my bullet journal, which has been the most life-changing habit that I've built in a long time. If you want to learn more about how this habit works, you can check out my video on the topic in the description box below. And that's it. This is how I make my videos. I hope you enjoy this episode, and besides that, guys, stay tuned.